I call the Honourable Member Barbara Stewart. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On behalf of New Zealand First, I rise to support the Medicines Amendment Bill. Like the previous speaker, I'd like to thank the officials for their hard work. There were some parts of the bill which did need a lot of clarity for the members, and they worked hard to ensure that we had that um, clarity. I'd also like to thank the Chair for his patience and the fellow members of the, of the committee. This bill has taken a long time to get back to the House. Why? We are totally unsure. We have had no reasons for the delay in this bill. But New Zealand First supports this bill, the Medicines Act, the Medicines Amendment Bill, with the global advances that are happening in medicines and the changing role of medical practitioners. We have always believed in New Zealand First that decisions regarding health had to be timely. And this is one way with the burgeoning um, disease burden that is, is now approaching New Zealand that we can ensure that timely decisions are actually made. By altering the definitions of medicines, medical devices, and further defining where various health professionals fit in on the prescribing framework, this bill will help to achieve the goal of timely decisions. Because what is the slogan that we hear in this House quite often? Is it better, sooner, faster? better, sooner, more convenient? Uh, we hear it daily. And we'd like to believe it. We believe, we believe we're not opposing it, we're supporting it. We believe this bill will actually enable New Zealanders to have a greater flexibility to get the most out of our health system. When one goes to the optometrist or the pharmacist or a nurse, nurse practitioner and some ailment is diagnosed and identified and prescribe, it makes sense to have that prescription written out at that time, rather than going to the GP at some later time when one has to arrange the appointment. We all know that attending work is one of New Zealanders' greatest considerations, and the greatest percentage of New Zealanders try to take the minimum of sick leave. So one of the purposes of this bill, as the Honourable Morris Williams said, is to modernise definitions to align with international law norms. This tells us a lot. Where New Zealand was once considered one of the world leaders in health information and health technology advances, we're now playing catch up with our legislation. But it is an important step if we're ever going to get ahead. We do live in a time now where technology is accelerating advancements in health and medicine. As such, it is no surprise to find that the definitions of medicines, medical devices and therapeutic purpose need adjusting from what's currently set out in the Medicines Act of 1981. To realign these products, um, these meanings with the products that we find ourselves buying time and time again is timely. Over-the-counter products for self-medication have advanced in recent years. The number of advances in over-the-counter products like contact lens solution, eye drops, headache remedies, self-testing pregnancy kits and nasal fluids can't be considered by anyone to fall under the category of medicine and they shouldn't be classified as such. And no doubt there's a whole list of other things that should be mentioned. <coughs> in fact, Technology has advanced significantly, and it's inevitable that technology and the regulations would need to be amended. We want these advances to continue, as we're the recipients to see the definitions of medical devices and medicines aligned with international norms. We live in an international world, and we basically can't afford to shut ourselves away in our corner of the world and ignore what's happening elsewhere. Who we see for a routine checkup or a repeat prescription has also changed quite markedly. Pharmacists, optometrists, dentists and nurse practitioners are often the first port of call for minor ailments or for ongoing condition maintenance. 
Where would we be without the trusted community pharmacies that can provide a wide range of advice and remedies for a wide range of ailments, from coughs and colds, first aid for a wide range of sports injuries, and everything else that's in between. Warts, nits, um, lice, everything. And we've all been there and used those services and sometimes bought those products ourselves. An excellent service that the pharmacists provide instead of actually going to the doctor. Pharmacists always provide a very valuable professional service, very high level, and it's instantly available, and people appreciate that. So we in New Zealand First were very pleased to see their prescribing regime actually change recently, and we wish them well and hope that it continues to. Of course, we have to recognise too the increase in the amount of training that's actually given to pharmacy staff by various organisations. This has really given the pharmacy staff and the customers the benefit of the wider experience of those working in the pharmacy industry, making everyone's understanding of minor health ailments so much better and allowing them to more ably select the self-medicating products that we rely on. With these subtle changes to the health model that we currently have, the legislation needed to catch up to accurately represent our experience within the health system. While working on this bill in the Select Committee, it became apparent submitters generally supported the new regime and the new definitions. I'm also confident that the work done on the bill has resolved the queries of the various groups that discussed their submissions regarding the prescribing framework. And it did take some work for all of us to understand the differences between an authorised prescriber, a designated prescriber and a delegated prescriber. All of those terms that the Honourable Morris Williamson waxed lyrical with this morning. So we believe that we can support this part of the bill with confidence. Delegated prescribers are very important, a valuable step away from health by postcode, a problem that we don't really want to have. It is a good option beyond the current prescribing practices that people currently have. When this role is totally established, it will help ensure that all New Zealanders have a more convenient and efficient access to medicine. We believe these changes will also help bridge the gap between the rural and the urban experience. So New Zealand First supports the passing of this bill as it allows a greater flexibility where medicine and health changes are happening at an incredible rate. We believe it's in the interest of our health outcomes to keep up with the changes. But safety, however, is a priority for New Zealand First. We will watch as the regulatory authority is created and carefully monitor what problems are arising in this particular Order. fashion. There is a large amount. Oh. While we're seeking to increase the flexibility of our health system, we will support the bill right through to the third reading. So thank you, Mr Speaker. The question is that the motion be agreed to. If men of that opinion will please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. The ayes have it. Medicines Amendment Bill, second reading. Right. This bill is set down for committee stage next sitting day. I therefore call on Government Order of the Day number 10. Natural Health Products Bill, second reading. I call the Honourable Minister Simon Bridges. Mr. Speaker.